Today we're talking microphones and we are going to focus on two different types of microphone today. Here we have a condenser microphone. Here we have a dynamic microphone. Let's look at the differences between the two. Now the condenser microphone. This is used a lot in recording studios because it can capture a lot of detail in my voice or sound, okay? It can get a lot of detail. Crystal clear is what will come out of this, okay? But one of the downsides is that if like a bus was driving past outside or someone was pl playing an instrument in the room next door or even talking, it might pick it up because it is so sensitive. So that's one of the downsides about a condenser microphone, but the clarity from these types of microphones is huge. So you might want to use this in a recording studio. When you're performing live, you've probably seen one like this before. This is called a dynamic microphone. The thing about dynamic is you can hold it in your hand and it won't be that sensitive, it won't pick up your hand rubbing against it. And you can sing into this or you can speak into this and if someone was playing a drum kit on stage, it wouldn't pick up as much of that unwanted sound compared to the condenser microphone. So it's very good for live situations, uh, you won't get as much clarity as the condenser microphone, but it's still very versatile and this particular microphone is used nearly all the time on stage. If I was to hold this condenser in my hand, you would hear a lot of the, the hand rubbing against it and it would not be consistent because it keeps on moving. It would not sound nice at all, okay? So this actually needs a cradle. So dynamic microphone, great for live situations and loud situations too. Condenser microphone, good for clarity and working in a studio. That's the main difference between the two. The job of a microphone is to capture. Just like a camera's job is to capture images, this is to capture sound, that's what it does. I'll explain this in more detail in another video. The way that we capture sound is using a polar pattern. That's for another video, but to give you the main principle of it, if I was to sing into this microphone, we'd probably use a cardioid polar pattern, which looks like this. So this here will tell me which field is being captured. I can change the field of capture by using the button on here to change, change it to different types or different patterns. Maybe you want it captured from the front and the back, but that's for another lesson, okay? Now for this to work, this condenser microphone to work, it needs plugged in, obviously. So we use what's called an XLR cable. Here's a, an X, this is one cable by the way. That's an XLR cable. So we plug it in, clickety click and we get our end and we plug that into what's called an audio interface. Okay, now this isn't plugged in obviously. So this is an audio interface. Now this condenser will not work unless I give it some extra power, which we call phantom power. That's 48 volts. 48 volts needs to travel down this XLR cable from this interface and into this uh, and into the microphone. This will not work. You'll get no signal at all unless the red light is on, which it's not, um, telling us that there's phantom power going into this condenser microphone. You don't need phantom power for a dynamic microphone. So you don't need phantom power for this. You can plug this straight in, but for it to work, you need 48 volts. And you usually have 48 volts button on a full, a 48 volts button on your interface, okay? This is then plugged into the computer so it goes from microphone, down the XLR cable, interface, USB cable into the back of your computer. So this converts your analog signal into a digital signal. This here is called the gain. The gain controls how much capture the microphone takes in. So if you've got something that's quite quiet in volume, you might want to turn the gain up. And if you've got something that's quite loud in volume, you might want to turn the gain down. This will stop it getting distorted. 